السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دیر واز اے مووی ریسنٹلی کالڈ سکس ڈگریز آف سپریشن اینڈ اٹ واز اباؤٹ ہاؤ پیپل آر انٹر کنیکٹیڈ اینڈ جسٹ بائی اے ویری سلائٹ wedge they are separated from each other a very slight uh, degree of separation well we are all separated from truth by a certain amount of degrees of separation sometimes a lot sometimes less than a lot but what separates us is very often incredibly minor, incredibly insignificant um, matters which have somehow become important enough in our existence to separate us from the truth. Now, why is it And what holds us in place that grabs us in such a way that doesn't allow us to move from it, that doesn't allow us to release ourselves from it, um, that has this incredible glue power that won't allow us to be released. Something like flypaper that's hanging and we keep flying by and getting caught. This all stems from what is called the dog of desire. Now, a dog will take dried out bones with no nutritional value and he will bury them in various areas that he can find again and then he'll go back and find them grab them up take them out of the ground bite into them create splinters in the bone the bone that splintered will cut the inside of his mouth create bleeding and the dog will think that he is enjoying this bone when actually he's drinking his own blood And it has nothing to do with what his imagination is. We're something like that. We create situations that we think are of great import, uh, great validity, uh, and we chew on them as if they were important and as if they were delicious and if they were satisfying but there's truly nothing to them. They're dried out, non-nutritious bone. And we are chewing into our own hallucinations. And we're making these hallucinations as if they were delicious. It's a big problem. And it is a major portion of the problem that creates this separation between ourselves and reality. The desire for things that are not real and the false satisfaction that comes from things that are not real. And many people can spend an entire lifetime wrapped up in these false satisfactions and these false desires and in the false belief system that they're getting something out of it. Quite simply, people see fame as an attribute. They see fame as something that does something for them. Now, imagine you are famous enough 
so that your picture appears on the cover of magazines. And lots and lots and lots of people see uh, the cover of the magazines. And lots and lots of people give you credence for being famous. And then you see the cover of the magazine and you go, wow, I'm famous. And somehow you get some kind of psychic thrill from the fact that you've become famous. And what is the reality of being famous in the world? What does it do for you? Well, for a lot of people, after they've been famous for a while, they find they have to escape (laughs) to somewhere where they're not known because fame makes people who don't know you think they know you. Fame makes people who have no relationship with you think they have a relationship with you and they want to impose on your existence as if they had some right because they feel they know you. Marlon Brando lived on an island for years and years and years. Other people escape to uh, foreign countries, escape to ranches that are hundreds of acres large so that they can get away from their quote-unquote adoring public. Why do we need to be adored by people we don't know, who we don't adore back? (laughs) It's an interesting one-way street. Here I am. Love me, love me, love me. But if you can't love in return, you have missed the entire equation that is love. You've missed the entire understanding that is love. So, what we need to begin to focus on is that which is relevant to our understanding of truth and relevant to to our progression of involvement in the qualities that lead to truth. So if you are involved in a relationship of love, that relationship has to be a two-way relationship. It has to be a relationship where the lover and the beloved can constantly change places. Where the lover becomes the beloved and the beloved becomes the lover. And there is a constant flow of being loved and being beloved in the relationship. This is the relationship that we have to have with humanity. Lover and beloved. You can't just be the beloved. God is the beloved. We are the ones who yearn for a relationship with the beloved. But it should be known that when we become true lovers of the beloved, the beloved also loves us. And then that relationship exists at the highest level of lover and beloved. We become bearers of Allah's secret. We become intermingled with Allah and part of his secret and then part of his secret becomes embedded in us and we are able to transfer the love that is his to humanity. We become God's helpers. Those who help the poor are helpers of Allah. Those who help the ones in need are helpers of Allah. And in reality, everyone is in need. Everyone needs love. There is no one who has all the love that they need or all the love that they want. So as we can go into the world and become lovers of humanity, 
lovers of humans, we can take and help take humans to the point of being perfected humans, which was Allah's intent for all humanity, to take humanity to the state where humanity intermingles with God by taking on God's qualities and by doing God's work in this world. And we are constantly given the opportunity to do this. Every interaction that we have is possible of becoming a loving interaction. Now, if we have lust and sex confused with love, then this isn't going to make much sense. But if we understand divine love as the love that nurtures and protects and sustains, the love that gives true meaning to compassion and mercy, true meaning to the qualities that belong to Allah, if we understand love as the transference of God's way into and around man and as being given to man, that's true love. Bowie used to talk about the 96 arts and the higher understandings. And the 96 arts were representations of the true qualities taken down to the level of illusion and intermingled with illusion. So divine love becomes sexual lust. It loses its true flavor and takes on a different flavor, a flavor that dissipates and degrades the participant as opposed to elevate and bring up the participant. So we need to move from the arts of the world to the truth of Allah. And we have to make that jump. And to do that, we need to be cognizant that that jump exists and that transition can be made. And when we become cognizant of that, amazing things begin to happen. If you can be in a loving relationship, you become medicine for each other. Stress is one of the killers in our modern society. But if you're with somebody and there's no stress in the relationship, and you have a total confidence in the person that you are, they become your blood pressure medicine. They become the healing hand that puts you at peace. And we have that ability with our parents, with our siblings, (coughs) with our spouses, with our friends, to be that healing hand that brings God's peace and God's love to others. The laying of hands, which is done in many religions, is the placing of a hand on someone who needs relief. And what is past in that laying of hands? God is past. Because God is the only healer. And if you are capable of bringing yourself to the point where you are without enmity, without resentment, without anger, without jealousy, and you have taken on a mandicum of God's qualities, and you don't have any of the barriers that stop those qualities from passing through you, you can become someone who can lay hands on people. And help them. And there are healers now who have understood this. And there are healing techniques. And somebody here practices them. (laughs) Where you move your hands around people to allow that energy to pass 
through and people become healed. We all have that ability. We all are in a place where we can become a, a, a trans. There's, there's a difference in words. A transmitter means it comes from you. A transducer means it comes through you. So we become transducers of that energy into others so that they can feel that which we feel if we truly feel it. And to do that, the barriers have to be gone. We have to get to the point where we can be happy for the health of others as we are for the health of ourselves. Where we're happy for the joy of others as we are for the joy of ourselves. So for joy to flow, we have to let it go. And imagine, if you are capable of letting your joy go, conversely, you're capable of feeling the joy of others. The joy multiplies because you've been able to give it away. That also means you'll be able to get it. But when you put a barrier around your joy because your happiness is seen somehow as depending on being better or more than others, you can't feel all the happiness and joy that's around the world. You can't partake in it because you've created these barriers around the happiness as if it's something that can be owned, something that can be held onto, something that can be hoarded. It can't be. All of the qualities that are God's are given to you as you give them away. All of the qualities that belong to Allah grow in you as you give them away. You become a tunnel for those qualities. And as long as you give them away, those qualities are in that tunnel that is you. They exist in you because they pass through you. And if you can stay in that state, they are constantly passing through you. Imagine being in a constant state of having Allah's qualities passing through you. So we have to take the opportunities to put ourselves in that state. We have to take the opportunities to release ourselves from the bonds of the illusion that creates separation. From the bonds of the illusion that says mine and yours. From the bonds of that which creates separations. When the separations are gone, we grow. We don't diminish. And this is the important belief that has to be truly understood by each and every one of us. The more we give away, the more we are. And the things that we give away have nothing to do with material wealth, have nothing to do with gold and silver and diamonds. They have to do with the qualities that belong to God that we can carry in our presence and give to others as presence. Presence becomes presence. And this is the greatest gift. Because if you can teach... If you can establish within someone else that all they need is already within them, that all that is necessary has already been given to them, imagine the burden that's taken off their shoulders. Imagine the load that's lifted from them. You can't do it until you've dropped that load yourself until you've dropped that burden yourself. But when you've dropped the burden, then you can begin to help others drop the burden. And in marriage, this is a sacred place for that, where the trust is to such a degree, and the confidence in each other is at such a degree, that there is 
no barriers between the two of you. And you are as comfortable with each other as you are with yourself. This is an amazing place to be able to go. But you can also have this relationship with friends. You can also have this relationship with parents. You can have this relationship. You have this relationship with your teacher. You can have this relationship. Somehow, it's incredibly important that this relationship, without barriers, without bounds, without restrictions, without resentment, be established with someone in this world. And that Baal Mahayadin appears in our midst and says, I love you. I love you so much you can't even believe it. And you begin to learn, wow, I can trust him with anything. He won't harm me. I can tell him anything. He won't harm me. I can unburden myself, unhide myself, become one who no longer stands in the shadows, but comes out front, and that which isn't worthy of being out front will be burned away. When we can get to that place with somebody, we have been altered. And once we've been altered, we can become that which assists in altering others. This is the great work in the world. So much of the world is hiding in shadows of differences, in shadows of separation, in shadows of mine and yours, in shadows of high and low, in shadows of right and wrong, in shadows of self-inflicted separations that keep us from Allah in the name of Allah. And here is where it really becomes difficult. We separate ourselves in the name of religion. We separate ourselves from God in the name of religion. We don't understand the unity of existence. For the unity of existence to be understood by you, you somehow have to enter into that unity with somebody. And that's what the teacher comes for, to become that first interaction, that first experience of true unity. And then you take that and incorporate it into your life and incorporate it into your world and incorporate it into the ones you know and the ones you love. And when that occurs, the world changes. And the world doesn't change in any other way. Because reality is the only truth. And reality is the connection that we have with Allah and through Allah to each other. And may that connection become real for all of us. May that understanding become real for all of us. May we be free of the bonds of illusion and the bonds of the world and the bonds of the needs that the world apparently seems to create for us. Let us see through illusion. Let our eyes burn through illusion. Let us be able to touch reality and let us be able to yearn for it know that that's where we belong and may Allah find us a place in his reality Amin Amin Ya Rabbi